making Caesar salad and steak and mushrooms. Right now we're going to start by trimming the Caesar salad lettuce so that we just get the good parts. Now we're going to wash off the lettuce. And we're just going to pat the lettuce dry on a clean towel. That way we can keep the pieces a little bit bigger instead of tearing them. I like to cut them with a knife. And the way we do that, we just put them in the towel and we gently roll the towel over the lettuce like that. Don't push too hard. Smash it and then unroll the lettuce. And we're good to go. I like to cut the lettuce rather than tear it. Give you more uniform sizes, which a member of our family likes better than random sizes. Including me, and it makes it so that every mouthful is pretty much the same. You don't have one huge one and one small one like you do when you tear. So you line up all the seams. Cut down the seams and then cut into bite-sized pieces. And put them in the bubble. You can still break some if you need to. And I like to add a little bit of lemon, freshly squeezed, onto the lettuce leaves before I start mixing. Gives it a nice, fresh flavor. And then we add bacon bits. Just make sure to keep that up. Croutons, which in this case are Caesar and their multi grain. We like croutons, so I throw in the whole bag. And this is the Caesar salad dressing that we use. This is the best one there is. You cannot get better. Definitely the best. So we add a few nice big. Spoonfuls of this. Make sure that there's enough to cover all the lettuce and all the ingredients. And now we're gonna mix it. Mm. Well, my son's gonna help me stir and mix the salad together. Okay, buddy. Mm -hmm. Let's do. It. Turn this way. There we go. Okay. Good. Mixing it all together, make sure everything's nice and evenly coated. You don't want to have big lumps of sauce or sections, lots of pieces of lettuce or anything that isn't covered by sauce. So you just keep stirring until everything's well mixed. Now we've got it nicely mixed and this is a bowl of salad for my son. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to these two pans we're going to use to prepare the mushrooms and we'll let that get heated up while we wash and clean our mushrooms. I like to pat dry my mushrooms after I've washed them. Cuts down on the amount of water that goes in contact with the oil in the pan so you end up with a better texture finished on your mushrooms, in my opinion. So we're just going to roll these out, dry them off. 
No pushing, no squeezing. Just a roll. And then we unroll. And now we'll go put them in the frying pan. Now you gently add the mushrooms to the frying pan. Don't drop them in there, otherwise the oil will splash up and burn you. So now we're going to add a little bit of seasoning to the mushrooms now that they've cooked for a little bit. A little bit of seasoned salt, not too much, just a little. And garlic powder, not garlic salt. You want to use garlic powder because garlic salt will make it way too salty. Garlic powder, not salt. It's important to keep turning them over so that they don't all always cook on the same side. You want to try and cook them as evenly as you can, so every once in a while mix them around a little. So now we're going to season our steaks with some familiar ingredients. Again, the the seasoned salt, just lightly, very lightly, on one side. And our good friend garlic powder again. Just a nice even coat. And our favorite, ground black pepper. We like quite a bit on our steaks so you don't have to use this much but you should have some on there peppers one of the most important things you can put on a steak when you're using a frying pan to cook it and these are coming right along they're just about done for now we're gonna take them out and put them in a bowl and we're gonna bring them back right at the end of the process and you'll see why in a few minutes so for now these mushrooms are cooked enough for this point so we're going to put them into a bowl and have them stand by bring these ones in as well Don't worry, they'll be back. So, now we want to have our frying pans sit for maybe 30 seconds so that they're nice and hot, and then we're going to add our steaks. Okay, now we're going to put our steaks on our frying pans. You want to hear that nice sizzling sound. And we're going to leave these here. Make sure it all touches the frying pan. I'm going to leave these here for four minutes aside at least. You can't flip them, you can't move them, you can't check them. you got to leave them to cook for four minutes. So it's now 7.40. So we'll be back at 7.44 and we'll have a look. Okay, so we gave them an extra minute because they weren't quite done at four minutes. So it's been five minutes and now we're going to turn them over. And there's that nice crust that you're looking for on that one there. And now this one. Same thing, good deal. Nice crust. Now we'll let it cook on this side for three or four minutes and we'll check how done they are then. And that's it for now.
Okay, so this steak here is done to my son's liking. So we're going to remove it and put it on the plate here. One of the most important things about a steak is when you're finished cooking it, it has to rest for at least five minutes before you touch it. Do not ever cut into a steak until it's rested for five minutes. When you go to a restaurant, they do that for you without you knowing about it. So that's an important thing to remember. Now, to finish it off, what we're going to do, remember the mushrooms? We're going to put the mushrooms back in and let them finish off cooking in the juices that are left over from the steak. It really gives them a nice flavor and it makes them extra tasty. So these steaks are done now. And the most important thing is to let them sit after you've taken them off the grill or the pan. They need to sit for at least five minutes before you cut into them. Otherwise, uh, you're, you're gonna ruin the steak if you eat it right away when it's too hot. Okay, I'll let the mushrooms cook for a few minutes. I've given the steak its time to rest, so now we're gonna add the mushrooms to the plate with the steak. And there is one plate of steak and mushrooms. And this is Sunday dinner, steak and mushrooms. So one of the noises you hear in the background is the overhead fan, which if you're uh, pan frying steaks, you really need to make sure you're using one of these fans because um, there, there is a fair bit of smoke because there's a high pan temperatures. So always turn on your fan on high and make sure not to forget that part. <laughs> 